Yeah, now you do a, a lot of the, the yeah you're in charge of a lot of the hiring and stuff and yeah. i know you uh you talk about uh i know you're big into black lives matter and stuff and that affects how you uh view your hiring process how does it how does it affect it like honestly i mean i've always had a really diverse group of friends and group of people that i work with like super diverse i don't even think about it but then when i look around i'm like Mm. Oh, actually, my cameraman is Venezuelan. I've got another one that's Jewish. I've got an assistant who is Ukrainian. I've got my script writer. I've got two script writers that are African-American. Mm. You know, so like, um, yeah, we mix it all up around here. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. Um, but I try to do that kind of like intentionally um, to make sure that we can create like a product that everybody can be proud to be a part of. Right. Um, I never try to like fetishize race or make people feel uncomfortable in any kind of way. And so having all different kinds of people around kind of ensures that I'm not overlooking something that could be really simple and very unintentional for me, you know? Right. And um, so like one of the things that is a goal of my production company is to kind of like just normalize having sex outside your own ethnicity. So not trying to fetishize it, but like just make it normal. Like, you know, sometimes bosses and secretaries have sex. Sometimes the boss is a woman. Sometimes the secretary is a man. Sometimes one of them is black. Sometimes one of them might be like, you know, Native American. Like, you know, it could be like whatever. But people um, fuck. People just actually fuck. And sometimes they don't look like they're from the same people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It's it's interesting because I, I was thinking, I, you know, I know back in the days when you had a lot of the everything was like contracted and it was a, so it, it's almost like the same thing that's happening with comedy with, with us. All the gatekeepers have been removed because the Internet is all wide open, which is one of the reasons why you got to direct and you got to edit and you got to you got to write and scripts and do this. And, and then and it's the same thing that's happening with us now. It's like one of the reasons why we have the podcast and why we have the Patreon. If y'all listening to this, please sign up for our Patreon. It's uh uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. Please support us so we can do it. But we're all putting this content out and where it was a where you had the gatekeepers where we could say where, you know, I, I um you can have a big old booty and it's fine because there are people who want a big old booty and don't want something that that's just skin and bones. And so there's a, even a diversity in that, because I know at one time I know I know I, I was I'm, I'm, I'm pretty cool with Mo and uh Mo the and, monster. And Mo when we had Mo on um and um, but Mo Mo was saying how he he um you know the the difference in the price like when you did interracial stuff and 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 when you crossed those color lines it was almost like like you couldn't make the same money you know there was a whole hierarchy at some one one time and I'm wondering how that's affected now because now you're the gatekeeper and the actual creators are creating the content. So a lot of that kind of behavior um, was still going on up until this year. And it it definitely tapered off slightly. And when I say behavior, I mean... um, Racism. (laughs) Well, obviously racism, but also the practice of paying um, people of color less, you know? Uh And we had this year with all the, well, 2020 with all the BLM stuff. And we had a lot of internal meetings within our industry and um, a group came together called um, BIPOC um, Mm. Collective. And they organized a lot of meetings where we were able to hear how the people of color in our industry feel about a lot of these storylines and stuff and feel about um, the way that they get paid and feel about the way that they're treated on set. And, it was cool because like I knew a lot of this already because right. I've always worked within, um, you know, with other people that are uh, different color yeah. than me. So I already knew a lot of this, but it was interesting hearing things I didn't know. Like I didn't even think about the fact that like a lot of times the black girls have to get done by makeup artists who are used to doing white faces. 
And yeah. they're like, you know, if you're hiring black girls, can you please get a black makeup, a makeup yeah. artist that's used to do them with textured yeah. hair and like a dark skin color, you know? Right, right, right. Like just even stuff like that. Or so, lighting um, it. Sometimes you have to light it in a different capacity. Yeah, I mean, right, the, exactly. right, all of it. I mean, the, but the point is, I mean, that's always the case. It's the, it's sometimes it's just the, it's the not knowing, it's a, the assuming that it is th that the, the water that you swim in is it, that you, we're aware of it, you yeah, know? Yeah, I know, for sure. And, and, and it, once you make it, make it like aware and you start talking about it, then it's up to people like myself who are producers to like listen to these claims and be yeah. like, oh, okay, my bad. I had no right. idea. Right. So, you know, the last um, girl with dark skin that I hired, I was like, hey, this is the makeup artist that I usually use. Is this okay for you? And I let her look at her work and make the decision herself. A lot of the performers, a lot of the claims that they had um, during these meetings were actually very valid claims for like all performers, you know, things right. like, we would kind of like to approve the script before we're actually in it, if that's possible. Like, could you shoot right. it over to us the night before? And I know a lot of performers would like that because they right. want to like look at the script and make sure that there's nothing in there that they feel uncomfortable with, which right. I, get. I feel the same way. Like I don't do um, like taboo incest family stuff like uh -huh. at all no matter what they change the titles to. Yeah. Um, but that's like a whole other problem. But like, yeah, like if I had the script the night before, I might want to like look at it and make sure they didn't sneak any, any like mommy shit on me, you know? Right, 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 right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, but like as far as like the pay goes, I think a lot of that is really 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 frowned upon now like i the last time that i came across a problem like that was kind of recently and i went to book a girl through an agent and he knew who he was talking to and he says to me she has a big cock bee. and i actually found that totally acceptable like because before it would have been like oh it's this much for interracial now he gives me a big cock fee, which I'm like, okay, but the next big cock white guy that I book her with, it better be the same price, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. I'd, rather, I'd rather you charge me by the inch than by the ski. <laughs> you know? like, yeah. school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.